Welcome to this tutorial on inferences about the difference between two populations. At this point, you should already be familiar with confidence interval estimation and hypothesis testing for the mean sigma known cases, for the mean sigma unknown cases, and for proportions. In this tutorial, we will be discussing those very same topics, but extending those techniques so they can be applied to two populations. Let's start with drawing inferences about the difference between two population means with both sigma 1 and sigma 2 known. Up until now, we have been looking at data that comes from one population, say one particular factory, or one retail store, or one group of students. So we have been using mu, x bar, sigma, and n to denote the population mean, the sample mean, the population standard deviation, and the sample size. Now let's assume we have two independent populations. Let's call them population 1 and population 2. These can be two different manufacturers of light bulbs, or they can be two different groups of students, say day students and evening students, or undergraduate students and graduate students. The point here is that they are from two different and independent populations. Population 1 has its own population mean, mu subscript 1, its own sample mean, x bar subscript 1, and its own population standard deviation, sigma subscript 1. It also has its own sample size, n subscript 1. Population 2 has its own population mean, mu subscript 2, its own sample mean, x bar subscript 2, its own population standard deviation, sigma subscript 2, and its own sample size, n subscript 2. What we are interested in is the difference between two population means. So in previous tutorials, we may have been interested to know if the true mean light bulb burn time was 1,050 hours. Now we are interested to see if there is a difference between manufacturer 1, mu1, and manufacturer 2, mu2, in the number of hours their light bulbs burn. If there is no difference between mu1 and mu2, then the difference between those two means, noted by the subtraction symbol, would be zero. In other words, if the mean burn time for manufacturer 1 is the same as the mean burn time for manufacturer 2, say 1,050 hours, then 1,050 hours minus 1,050 hours would be zero. So if mu1 minus mu2 is zero, then there is no difference between the two brands or manufacturers of light bulbs. Let's start with an example of interval estimation for the difference between two means, mu1 minus mu2. And let's define mu1 as the mean of population 1, which would be light bulbs from brand A, and mu2 is defined as the mean from population 2, which will be light bulbs from brand B. The difference between these two population means is mu1 minus mu2. To get an estimate for the difference between mu1 and mu2, we will take a sample of light bulbs from brand A and call it n subscript 1, and a sample of light bulbs from brand B and call it n subscript 2. We will then get two sample means, x bar 1 from sample 1, and the second, x bar 2, from sample 2. Now we can compute the point estimator for the difference between two population means. Remember, the point estimator for mu is x bar, so the point estimator for the difference between two population means would be x bar 1 minus x bar 2. If you recall, x bar from a single population had a standard error we calculated to represent the variation in the sampling distribution. For two independent random samples, the standard error of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is shown by the symbol sigma subscript x bar 1 minus x bar 2, and it is equal to the square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. Sigma 1 is the standard deviation for population 1, and sigma 2 is the standard deviation for population 2. To get a confidence interval estimate for the difference between two population means, we would take x bar 1 minus x bar 2 plus and minus a margin of error. Remember we did this with confidence interval estimation for a single population. We simply took x bar plus and minus a margin of error. So now we have x bar 1 and x bar 2, so we take the difference of those two point estimators. 
If you recall, the margin of error is z times the standard of error, which in this case is shown here as the square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. Notice again that z has a subscript of alpha divided in half. This is because with confidence intervals, since we have an interval with an upper tail above it and a lower tail below it, we always split alpha in half. Here is the complete formula for drawing a confidence interval on the difference of two means. We take x bar 1 minus x bar 2, and then plus and minus the margin of error, which is z alpha divided in half times the square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. Now let's try an example. Let's say we are interested in comparing the mean burn time of brand A light bulbs and brand B light bulbs. This table shows that the population standard deviations are known to be 20 hours for brand A and 15 hours for brand B. A sample of 49 light bulbs is taken from brand A, shown in the table as N subscript 1, and a sample of 64 light bulbs is taken from brand B. The sampled light bulbs are measured for burn time, and the mean burn time for brand A is 1,050 hours, shown as X bar 1, and the mean burn time for brand B is measured at 1,045 hours, shown as X bar 2. The point estimate for the difference of the two means would be X bar 1 minus X bar 2, which is 1,055 minus 1,045, which is 10 hours. We can calculate a 95% confidence interval on this point estimate using the formula shown here. This is the same formula we saw on the previous slide. So we have x bar 1 minus x bar 2. Now we need to look up z of alpha divided in half for a 95% confidence interval. For 95% confidence interval, alpha is 0.05. So alpha divided in half is 0.025. Looking that up in the z table, we find 0.025 in the middle of the table, and then looking to the left, we find 1.9, and looking up, we find 0.06. So the critical value for alpha divided in half is plus and minus 1.96. Now going back to our calculations, we have z of 1.96, so we're ready to plug in all the numbers back into the formula. And we get 1,055, minus 1,045 for x bar 1 minus x bar 2, plus and minus 1.96, the z value, times the square root of 20 squared divided by 49, plus 15 squared divided by 64, and we get 10 plus and minus 1.96 times 3.4174. That number 3.4174 is the standard error for the difference between x bar 1 and x bar 2. And so now we get 10 plus and minus 6.6981. And the interval for the difference between mu1 and mu2 would be somewhere between a low number of 3.3 hours and a high number of 16.69 hours. This interval represents a 95% confidence interval on the estimated difference between the two population means, in this case between brand A light bulbs and brand B light bulbs. Now that we have done confidence intervals on the difference between two means, it is natural for us to extend that to conduct a hypothesis test for the difference between two means. There are three forms of the hypothesis test. The first shows the null hypothesis as the hypothesized difference between the means greater than or less than d0, and the alternative as the difference between the means less than d0. d0 refers to the hypothesized difference between the means, and it is usually zero since we are looking to see if there is a difference between the means and assuming the difference is zero. Since the alternative hypothesis is in this form with a less than sign, we are focused on just one tail, the lower tail, and this form of hypothesis test is called a one-tailed lower tail test. The next form shows the null hypothesis as the hypothesized difference between the means less than or equal to d0, and the alternative hypothesis as the difference between the means greater than d0. Since the alternative hypothesis in this form is a greater than sign, this form of hypothesis is called a one-tailed upper tail test. And finally, we have this form, which shows the difference equal to or not equal to some hypothesized difference. 
D naught, and since there is no focus on a particular tail, this is called a two-tail test. The test statistic for testing the difference between two means, sigma known, is shown here. You can see that this is a z-test with a numerator of x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus d naught, which is really 0 in most cases, divided by the square root of sigma 1 squared divided by n1 plus sigma 2 squared divided by n2. Now we can conduct a hypothesis test on the difference between the two population means. Let's use the same example we used for the confidence interval estimation. Suppose a consumer advocacy group wants to know if there's any difference between the mean burn time of brand A light bulbs and brand B light bulbs. We begin with the assumption that there is no difference between brand A and brand B, so the null hypothesis would be that the difference between mu1 and mu2 is equal to zero. And then if the sample shows that we should reject the null, it would lead us to the alternative hypothesis, which is that the difference between the two means is not equal to zero meaning that there is a difference between the two means. Let's use the same data we had before. Here is the table for brand A and brand B light bulbs. We have the population standard deviation for both populations 1 and 2, the sample size, and the sample means. Now we are ready to calculate the test statistic. Here is the formula we use, and here it is with all the numbers plugged in. And we get 2.9262. That is our test statistic. Now the next step is to look up the critical value. Let's use a 0.01 level of significance. So that means alpha is 0.01. And since this is a two-tailed test, we split alpha in half and get alpha divided in half, 0.005. Looking this up in the Z table, we find the closest number to 0.005 is in the middle of the table between these two numbers, 0.0049 and 0.0051. Looking to the left, we find 2.5, and looking up, we find the number is between 0.07 and 0.08, so the critical value is somewhere between 2.57 and 2.58. So we're going to use plus and minus 2.575 as the critical value. Now that we have the critical value, the next step is to compare the test statistic with the critical value. And comparing the two, we find the critical value here at plus and minus 2.575 and the test statistic here at 2.962, which is clearly above the critical value and in the rejection region. Our next step is to come to a statistical conclusion. So we reject the null hypothesis since the test statistic is in the rejection region and we find evidence that there is a difference in the mean burn time between brand A and brand B. We can also conduct the same hypothesis test using the p-value approach. To use the p-value approach we take the same test statistic we calculated using the critical value approach 2.9262 and look it up in the z-table to find the p-value. We need to look in the Z table for the closest number to the test statistic 2.9262. But let's round that to 2.93 since the table only goes to the hundredths decimal place. So looking down on the left side, we find 2.9 and at the top we find 0.03, so that makes 2.93. And now following across and down, we get a p-value of 0.0017. The number we looked up in the table was just for one of the tails, and this is a two-tailed test. So the rule for the two-tailed test is to double the p-value and then to compare it to alpha. 0 0.0017 times 2 is 0 0.0034. The rejection rule for the p-value approach is to reject the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than or equal to the alpha value, and do not reject the null if the p-value is greater than the alpha value. In this case, the alpha value we used is 0.01. That was given when we first started the problem a few slides back. So 0 0.0034 is less than 0 0.01, and therefore we reject the null hypothesis and find evidence for the alternative hypothesis, which is that there is evidence that there is a difference between the mean burn time of brand A and brand B. That concludes part one of this tutorial on inferences about means from two populations, sigma known.
Please make sure to watch part two, where we will continue with inferences about means from two populations when sigma is unknown. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you learned something.